Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 27 to 38. It's the Gospel for Thursday in the 23rd week of Ordinary Time. Syndic writes, Jesus said, But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who ill-treat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. That's from Luke chapter 6, verse 27 to 38. Our Lord speaks of love. You know, if we think of Albert Einstein, we think of mathematics and physics, especially the great theory of relativity. If we think of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, we think of the communist ideal of a socialist and classless society, free of the opiate that is religion. If we think of Buddha, we think of his teaching on being enlightened and attaining to nirvana. If we think of Socrates, we might think of his Socratic method of attaining truth. If we think of Aristotle, we think of philosophy, and depending on our knowledge of his system, we might recall his metaphysics or ethical principles. At the risk of appearing to reduce the incarnate Son of God to the level of but a great teacher, if we think of Jesus Christ, what tends to come to mind in respect to his system? What comes to mind is his teaching on love for others. Rightly or wrongly, for good or ill, it is primarily this which is lodged in the imagination of the ages, rather than, say, his divinity or his establishment of the church or the mystery of the Trinity or the atonement. Those who know little of him and think about him hardly at all have picked up the point that Jesus Christ taught us to love one another. This might be a vacuous impression and seriously misunderstood, but most people think that if you are not good to others, then you can scarcely be called a Christian. A very Christian sort of person is one who is good to others, even when it is difficult and inconvenient, and even if this goodness to others is not reciprocated. It may escape many persons that other moral teachers have taught this too, even if, on closer inspection, it is discovered that Christ's doctrine on love for others is not the same. Still, it is this for which Christ is especially famous, and it is backed up by the point that Christ lay down his life for his sin, for the sins of the world, even if many have no interest in or understanding of this fact. Christ taught men that they must love one another, and for this, his life has been deemed good and useful. People know that Jesus Christ and his teaching on love is the inspiration for numerous works of charity in the world over the centuries, 
Indeed, it is on this basis that many would accept that the world is a better place for his having lived, and that his influence has been, well, quite incredible. All up, there is a popular understanding that Jesus Christ and his religion insists on love for others. But of course, to say this about the teaching of Jesus Christ is not good enough. In a sense, it ought to be obvious to ordinary human reflection that we must love one another as we might love ourselves, if only because we share in the same human nature, giving to us all an equal human dignity. Strangely, I once knew a lecturer in philosophy who in his remarks on an essay that I once submitted declared that he did not know what human dignity meant. Jesus Christ revealed the dignity of each human being and the love and respect which he deserves in a way far beyond any other teacher. This is because Jesus Christ revealed himself to be divine and, as the divine person he is, he identified with the least. The least human being, no matter how deprived in any sense, no matter how defenceless and vulnerable, can say, I am loved by Jesus Christ, the incarnate Son of God. He takes my part. Whatever the powerful may do, or fail to do that they should have done, Jesus Christ will vindicate the least of his brothers and will avenge his own. The Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, has a strong trail of this divine concern for the neglected, the poor, for those not accorded their rights to mercy, justice and compassion. He has exalted the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has protected his servant Israel, keeping his merciful design in remembrance, as the mother of the Messiah proclaimed before her kinswoman Elizabeth, as we read in Luke chapter 1, verse 53 to 54. The one God, Lord of heaven and earth, identifies with each and all his children, and requires of all that they love their fellows. This reaches its fullest revelation in Jesus Christ, who by his incarnation, as the Second Vatican Council insists, unites himself with every man and woman. God has become brother to each of us. Christ our judge will count as being done to him whatever we do to the least. All of this brings us to our gospel that I read earlier from Luke chapter 6, verse 27 to 38, in which Christ lays down his law of love. Love your enemies, do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. It is one thing, and it is a very good thing, to love those who love us and will love us. But Christ tells us that we must go much further. We are to love our enemies. Now for this all-important divine command, the good news is that we have the gift of divine grace. I will remember years ago an Anglican girl said in a talk I attended that she once set herself the goal of observing the Christian command of love. Knowing that she needed the grace of God to do it, she resolved to receive the Eucharist regularly. The point is that Christ established in his church the kingdom, the kingship, the rule of God. To enter this, we must be born again by water and the Spirit, by the grace that comes in the Church and her sacraments. We must grow in the grace that is available to us, living all the while the new commandment of love. It will take us to sanctity.